New Relic Query Language, or NRQL, enables you to query data collected from your application and transform that data into charts that allow you to interpret what your data says about your application and your business. This tutorial will cover an introduction to the Insights Query Language, NRQL, and NRQL Query Syntax and Composition. NRQL is a database querying language similar to SQL. It queries against the events database, allowing you to create charts with data about your applications. Once you make a query, data comes back in a JSON format, which the Insights widgets use to make meaningful charts. We can take a look at the data we actually have to work with in the Explore Data section of Insights. From here, we can see a list of all the events that we collect data for. If your app is connected to New Relic through APM and browser, then you should see page view and transaction events. When we click on an event, we can see a detailed list of all the attributes or data that was collected and sent to New Relic. It is important to know what attributes are recorded in your Insights account so you can write useful and meaningful queries using all the data you have available. You may find it helpful to brainstorm some questions you want to ask in Insights before diving into NRQL query or event query writing. For example, I want to know, how many total sessions have there been on my site? What city are my users coming from? What transactions occur most frequently? How long does it take for pages to load for users? Is backend or frontend browser response time taking more time to complete? How many unique visitors did I get to my site from a particular city? Before we start writing our event queries, let's take a moment to talk about NRQL query syntax. As you type out your queries, you'll notice that when we start a query, a list of keywords appears for us to choose from. You can either click on the word you want to use, or use the arrow keys to move up and down on the list and hit the tab key to enter the word in the query tool. These are the suggestions for NRQL clauses, functions, attributes, or events that may fit into that part of the query, based on an event that has already been chosen, or the structure of the query as it is up to that point. The suggestions that come up are not comprehensive, and they are based on the last hour of relevant events based on what data has been sent to New Relic Insights. I'll start with my first question. How many total sessions have there been on my site? Here's a basic query that will give me information about the total number of events that have the session attribute in the page view data table. The first part of a query always starts with the select statement. After the select, we need to choose an attribute or NRQL function that we want to see data about. In this case, I am using count session, where session is an attribute in the page view table, and the NRQL function count will show us the total count of events that have session IDs. After you choose an attribute you want to visualize data for, then the next step is to designate the event that contains data for that attribute. In our example query, we already know the session attribute is in the page view events, so we need to specify that in the query. The SELECT and FROM statement are required for a successful query. I want to note that attributes are case sensitive, but NRQL statements, clauses, and functions such as FROM, COUNT, and SELECT are not. Now that we have a complete query, I'll click on the run button and we can see our query results. And here we have a number. I'm going to add more to this query to get more helpful info, but first let's review. The basic syntax for queries consists of the following. We select a function or attribute from an event, then we add optional parameters to drill deeper into the data by limiting by time, facets, and comparisons to other attributes. Now let's make our query a little more interesting. We can add additional query clauses to focus our data and drill down to the specifics. A count of all the session attributes in all of the page view events doesn't give us all that much information. Let's add a facet clause to our query, which will divide our total count into buckets based on each individual value for the city attribute. So if we add a facet clause to our query, we can separate this total count of visits to a chart that shows the number of sessions by city. Now our query reads select count of session from page view, faceted by city. So now when we hit enter, we can see a chart that has divided our count into the individual sessions from each city. Another aspect of a standard query is the time range. There are many different clauses and functions we can use to measure the duration or to set a time range for attributes or events. For now, let's go ahead and limit the data to the past week using the keyword since. 
Once we do that, we can see more data has been picked up for the query to use and to work with. There are many additional clauses we can use to make our query more specific as well. Next, let's talk about how we can use commas in our NRQL queries to aggregate data from different sources. Commas allow us to merge data from two different event types or to return multiple columns or attributes from a dataset. Let's take another one of our questions. What transactions occur most frequently? To write this query, we will use a comma to draw from both page view and transaction events. In this query, we are using the attribute duration, which is shared by the page view and transaction events. We are also using the average function to see the average duration or response time of the application for the front end to load. We can query and combine our results from both page view and transactions by including both events in the query after from and separating them by a comma. The clause facet by name will break out the resulting data by name and show us the average duration per web transaction or transaction event name. We can also use the comma to merge two or more attributes from an event in a single query to show us the combined data. Let's take a look at another question. Is backend or frontend browser response time taking more time to complete? This query will show the average durations for frontend response time and backend transaction duration from the page view events. Like before, when we combine data from two different types of events, these attributes are separated by a comma, but in this case, because we are combining attributes from one set of events, the page view event, they are listed after the select statement. You'll notice I'm also using the time series function, which will show the average durations for both attributes over the last minute in a time series chart. The time series function is especially valuable and useful because all new relic data is based on events that occur over time. The time series function allows you to view how your data is changing over a set period of time and displays and updates in real time. Another part of a standard query is the aggregator function. We've already seen the count function quite a bit, so let's take a look at some other functions. Let's start with unique count. While the count function will display every single instance of the attribute you query for, the unique count will go through all the data and throw out any repeat values. This function can help us answer, how many unique visitors did I get to my site from a particular city? This example will return a count for all the individual user sessions, or unique session ID numbers, as opposed to a count for each event that was fired, regardless of a unique session ID. So if a user visits a single page multiple times, an event may be fired for each visit within that single session, and unique count will count all of those events fired in that session as one. Next. Let's adjust our query to use the uniques function. The query will output a list of all the cities where individual users viewed pages over the past week. This is helpful when we want to know where our users are from. The uniques function will go through all of the data and throw out any repeats, showing you only the unique values of an attribute, but not the count. This is helpful if you have a long list of possible attribute values, like cities users could access your app from, and you only want to see a list of the cities users actually did access your app from. Next, we're going to take a look at the min and max functions. It's important to note that these functions only work with attributes that contain numerical values. Let's take a look at this query. This will simply give us the smallest or minimum duration and the biggest or maximum duration. You can also view the average duration by including the average function. The average function will calculate the average time it takes to load the front end from all the duration values recorded for all page view events. The average is a useful function in general, but when combined with a min and max, we can see how far out any outliers are to get a sense of whether the average is being overly influenced by them. Adding a time series clause at the end of our query will give us a nice comparative graph. We can do this by adding time series to the end of our original query. Now we can really see where the average is in comparison to the min and max. The last function we're going to take a look at is the sum function. Let's see the query. Sum will add the numerical values for an attribute together from all the values recorded for that event. In this example, we are adding together all of the durations from page view and faceting or breaking the data out by a page URL and then limiting our results with the where clause to only show our data from Wilmington. To see more functions and a detailed description of how to use them, please visit the docs site at docs.newrelic.com. 
Now that you know the basics of the New Relic query language, you're ready to start developing charts and dashboards in New Relic Insight to help you understand and improve your website's performance.